happy Saturday, everybody. You're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and today is going to be really empowering. you find out why. We'll be right back. It's time for the woman on the move. This is a female entrepreneur. She's really, really hardworking, pressing on towards her goal. Let's see who she is. Stitching human parts was her dream, but Bernice is now stitching fabrics to make beautiful clothes. Dramdo, it's an ewe name, which means um, dress me so basically that's where the name is coming from growing up i love to stitch like using thread and needle to stitch small small clothes for my dolls and, but then i wanted to become a medical doctor or a pharmacist i loved science and it was like you have to become a seamstress they didn't say design now they said seamstress so I, ah, god forbid come become a seamstress in future because i loved science and no i can't become a seamstress Starting Dramdo was not easy, especially when Ghanaians had developed a lot of taste for foreign products and fashion designers were already in the system. All I had was my skills. The machine was my mother and I was using it. I didn't have, I didn't start with anything. How did she sell through then? I was sewing for people for free. So I'll call you because I know because it's for free, you will come. And if something goes wrong, you won't complain. So that's what I was doing when I was in school. And I was learning, sewing, and learning. And sometimes I'll just say, okay, you buy lining, you buy a zipper, and you buy probably buttons. I'll sew for you for free. So if I sew and they like it and they come again, then I charge them. She tells me Dramdo, which started from her backyard, is fast becoming a household name. I designed for um, Face of Legon contestants. That was in 2016. No, 2017, in 2017, yeah. And also I designed for uh, Pantine Nursing School Beauty Pageant, yes. And also designed for PSE Star. I also designed for um, Nana of uh, GMB, I think, 2017. And I'm designing something for Hima. Or Hima, first runner of GMB. Okay. Her first design was a wedding gown for her best friend. She explains that was her biggest breakthrough for her. My first perfect gown, should I say fortunately or unfortunately, was for a friend. Okay. So I wanted it to go right. I wanted everything to be perfect. So I, I had to stay up, make sure I delivered, make sure it was perfect. Because it was my first gown. I didn't want anything to go wrong. Because someone's big day, you can't ruin it. So I made sure... I delivered and wow, the gown came out very nice. But then after that, I realized that I could have done something better. Okay, I've done. And I think the more you work on gowns and stuff like that, the more you like get, gain more experience and you know. Interestingly, her friend whom she made the gown for is now converted and joins her in the trade. I told her, Benes, I'm getting married. And I wanted to do my gown. And she was like, Nana, we are going to do it. I said, yeah, I trust you because you've been sewing for me and a whole lot. But with gown, you know, it is your first day. And it is your day that everybody will be looking at you. No matter what you put on, you, the person getting married, is the center of attraction. And she said, we are going to do it. So she sent her the picture. So I did send her the picture. And she said, don't worry, we are going to do it. So I went to market to get the things that we needed for the gown. And voila. Everybody was like, oh, who is the designer who did it for you? And I said, oh, this is even her first gown. And they were like, wow. And up to now, I still love it because even now, I just take off the ball, add it down, and I use the top for something else. Bernice has dreams of becoming a bigger brand in the future. So the choice is yours. You think you have an excuse not to pursue your dreams? What could be holding you back? If you've started, if you've been able to start, then you can also get there. Okay, 
the moment you plant sometimes you plant in animals who come in eat your plant and all that but you have to, you have to make sure you're consistent as i said earlier on be consistent don't give up be hard working be good at what you do if you have to polish up go and but if you have to learn more don't just depend on what you know sometimes you have to read now we have google you have to read research know what's trending some people just learn and they know how to soak up and stay or they know how to sew this pop and they don't know that pop is no more in existence the next time you think of quitting remember 30 year old bennis of Dramdo designs who quit her medical dreams just so she can chase her passion Our winning woman for today is Mrs. Belinda Boydu. She's the CEO and founder of Impart and Impact. Now, I like this, okay? You have, first of all, you have to explain the meaning of the two words because a lot of people always confuse them. That's they're saying impart and they say impact. They're saying impact and they say impart. So it's even a tongue twister. It is so, so yes, yeah, so tell us a bit about impart and impact. What is it all about? And you're very welcome to the Today's Woman Show. Thank you. So, um, first of all, it's a consultancy, essentially. And we are focused on providing educational, career, and business consulting. Okay. Um, the focus is really to ensure that in all those different spheres of life, people have the skills, the know-how, the knowledge to be able to go forth and do what it is that they're trying to do. Okay. When it comes to the name, it is indeed a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> Most people just say impact and impact or impart and impact, as you said. <laughs> but it's impart and impact, essentially because you're being imparted upon so you can go out and make an impact in the world. So. That's the meaning That's it. behind okay. it. So ladies, you're watching and you're listening. And today, by the end of the show, I want every woman watching to feel like I'm going to impact. Yes. I have to impact the life of somebody. That's what we are doing. Absolutely. That's what this show really is about. Absolutely. To really, really empower women out there to, to inspire them. And that's why we have beautiful, strong women like yourself Thank come you. on the show. So today, that's why I said it's going to be very, very, very empowering because I'm already <laughs> feeling some energy somewhere. So tell us a little bit about you. Okay. So how did you grow up? What was your plan? Is this really what you saw yourself doing? And would you say you're fulfilling, you know, your purpose? I would have thought that I've always wanted to do something that is working with people mm -hmm. and in some way, shape or form, empowering people, mm -hmm. though I can't say that at the age of 10 or whatever, that this is exactly what I had in mind, but I'm certainly quite happy that this is the course that I ended up being on. Um, my background is quite varied. I grew up in a number of different countries. Tell us about them. I mm -hmm. was born in Ghana, but I left at a really early age, mm -hmm. probably, I think at one. Okay. And then I briefly came back, I think, for about two years. Okay. But then I moved to Belgium. Mm -hmm. So I spent pretty much my... Um, childhood growing up in Belgium, uh, went to school there up until secondary school. Okay. And then we relocated to the UK, mm -hmm. to London specifically. And that is where I have been up until perhaps the last two years, roughly. Okay. I'm in and out. So, okay. you know, I, I essentially saw... So what brought you back home? Um, my husband. Love. I fell in love. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love and he pretty much kept convincing me That's to spend nice. more and more time here. We love you, honey. <laughs> we do. <laughs> I certainly do. So, um, yes, that's how I've that's ended really up nice. being. And are you happy being back? I am. I mean, being back is quite interesting because mm -hmm. maybe I never felt like I was essentially growing up here. Mm -hmm. But I am really happy to be connected again to my mm -hmm. roots. And was it like settling in? Um, and I'm asking this and I ask a lot of um you know, businesswomen, entrepreneurs who've moved back home yeah. about the difference in the work ethic, you know, okay. and how they're sort of settling in. 
I think initially anyone coming here needs to understand that the processes are quite different mm -hmm. and you need a lot of patience. Okay. You need to not go with the same pace as you're going if you're living in London, for example, or if you're coming from the States. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work out if you come in with that kind of mindset. But there is a lot of things to achieve here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people lose focus a little bit because you, you sort of get a bit despondent from how people respond, as you're saying, the yeah. work ethic is yeah. a bit different. But once you understand how the people work and you find your way sort of meandering through it, it's not so So bad. did you come prepared like this or did you come and learn it? Did you come and find out? Okay, so my husband and I have been together for about five years now. Okay. And in that space of time, I'd been doing a lot of coming up and down. Okay. So I think I had a little bit of a precedence of understanding um, the culture, the working mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's very different when you essentially settle and mm. you've got your foot on the ground mm -hmm. and, you know, you get more and more used to how things work out here. Right, yeah. right. So you, you, you're the founder of Impart and Impact, yes. and then you also have Motivational... Motivational mo yes, Moments, moments live. live. So yeah. now I focus a lot more on Motivational Moments Live because... Um, I, I'm a, well, not a new mom, but I have a two-year-old. Okay. And um, I promised that for the first two years of her life, I would dedicate that on being her mom and yeah. grooming her and right. raising her and right. giving being her the best foundation. Being a part of her life, yeah. Exactly. So um, I had to change my focus ever so slightly in terms of not not actively going out and seeking clients, which would take up a lot of my time. time. So I started focusing a lot more on Motivational Moments Live, okay. which is um, um, a monthly, sometimes bi-monthly time on social media to just motivate the listeners. Oh, it's across lovely. lots of different subjects, you know, from essentially how do you get started in the business mm. world or how do you keep yourself encouraged? Mm. Lots and lots of different So, so is, this, is, this, is it actually a business or is it a, an, an NGO or something? How, how do you make money out of that? So in part and impact is registered as a business, mm -hmm. but the motivational moments life that I'm focused on more is, is not a money making engine. Okay. I think it's a passion fulfilling right. type engine right. because essentially no one's paying me for it but I but do get a lot of But it probably lead to consultation, like one-on-one yeah, -on -one consultation. absolutely. I think the doors for me are now open because my daughter's two-year timeline is up. <laughs> it's like it's mommy's turn so you, so you gave her the time, right? I gave her the time <laughs> and I think she understood it quite clearly. <laughs> no, I think we should toast to that. Okay, congratulations. delicious. Congratulations. Yes. Yes, yes. And this is from the one to one bar here at the Moving Pick. Oh, wow. This is delicious. Mm. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thank We're here you. in the presidential suite. I absolutely love it. I love the ambience. Like, I come here and I don't even want to end. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think you're doing a great, great, great job. Thank and you. that, this is, you know, something great for new mothers as well to, to learn like you know to to be a part yes. but do you think it's easier when you're an entrepreneur you have your own business if you were working for somebody if you're working in a corporate you know institution you probably how would you make that decision to say i think there's pluses and minuses on mm -hmm. both ends mm -hmm. right as an entrepreneur people you you have two worlds here you have to an extent the ability to choose how you use your time mm -hmm. but the reality is that that's not exactly true because if you're gonna try and make it it all depends on you right so if, you, if you're saying I'm choosing my time and I'm literally going to just do three hours a day or a few hours a week you need to understand that that's probably not, not going to that, make yes things want, work right. for you so it requires a lot of input a lot of your time a lot of energy and attention mm. to do what it is that you're trying to achieve mm -hmm. but i think once you get started it, it doesn't stay like that forever so once you get started and you've got your feet on the ground a little bit then it allows more liberty to be more flexible right and yes. congratulations you recently had an event i did last weekend tell us about it oh. so like so yeah the founder of like four different companies you have another two you yeah. tell us i wouldn't say anything you tell I, me i am a little busy um but you are a lot busy let's try <laughs> there's no false humility here tell us 
you know, because you're, you're going to ginger somebody out there to say, <laughs> she's doing four different things. Mm -hmm. Let me start my one. So, so oh. no false humility here. Tell us, you're working okay. hard. To answer that part of your question, yeah? I'm the type of person I would hate to be on this earth and leave and find that I didn't utilize mm. even like 10% of mm. everything that I had within me. I don't think I've even tapped into a half or a quarter, but as much as I possibly can, every single area of my life, I want to be doing things and doing things as effectively as possible. So you have the important impact, which is to do with empowering people from all walks of life, right. be it business, be it children, because the educational arm focuses on children, right. um, you know, be it people who are looking for work for a long time and are struggling, that covers that. But ever since having a little girl, um, suddenly I realized that there was a lot of things that were new to me. Mm. And then I began to wonder how many people are going through the, the process the same of... same thing. Yes, questioning. Yeah. Do I do this? Do I do that? And do you that? have, apart from your husband, do you have family here? Do you have... Do you, know, does the, do you have any other support system here? I have family here, but I have perhaps, or my husband and I have really chosen to live a bit of a nuclear lifestyle, okay, okay. purely by choice. Right. We don't even have a nanny or house help. Oh, wow. So okay. I, I just, I think it's a, maybe a bit of a European or UK mentality. I'm not going to have it over there. So I don't see why I need to get myself into a habit of having it over here okay. because if I'm over, the, over there, you're, you're on your own. <laughs> no okay. one's going to stop what they're doing to come and help you. You're on your own. So we live a bit of a nuclear life. Okay. We have family, but you know, we sort of stick to doing things on our own. Okay. But um, then coming back to the uh, Atana Mums, yes. which is what it's called. Um, Atana I, Mums. Atana What's mums. the meaning? What is it? So um, Atana is like an old Greek word mm -hmm. and it stands for strength and glory. Oh, okay. And what I really wanted to achieve was bringing a lot of women, mothers together to give each other strength so we can come out glorious. Oh, that's lovely. So that's the meaning that's behind lovely. that okay. one. Okay. Um, so initially I was really apprehensive. I thought just because you're new to motherhood doesn't mean everyone else's and no one's going to be interested in this. But I gather the courage and I called a few friends of mine I want to set up this network what do you think and they all jumped in so now we started from maybe a handful of people to about 150 international oh, wow. months that's fantastic. and that's what makes it so really is it, exciting. Is it is it like um, is it on social media or is it on <laughs> whatsapp what so, is it um, the shall I say the more private platform the Atana mums exist on whatsapp it's a whatsapp okay. group the mums come from all over we're literally in the states in the UK in Europe in the Middle East all over okay. um, but then we have a we now have a wider network because I realized that a lot of the things we discussed there and I'll give you a little bit of background mm -hmm. every day Monday mm -hmm. to Friday we drop a topic or I drop a topic mm -hmm. and the topics cover literally everything okay. from motherhood to careers to relationships, relationships. Fridays right. is dedicated right. to sex it's called sexy Fridays okay most of the women love Fridays <laughs> um, but we discuss everything and the idea is that it's peer-to-peer -peer experience sharing mm. so, we'll so is that is that an age bracket no, no, as long as you're either okay. expecting or a mother okay it's it's pretty okay. open I think it becomes very different like my mom wouldn't be part of it because mm. I'm now a grown-up so it's more relevant if you have children where you can still be learning how you can right. look after okay. them. Okay. Yeah. So what's it like, what's the control on the WhatsApp group like especially just because you know sometimes it, I, I'm, a, I'm a member of different groups on different platforms on WhatsApp and every day you see somebody leaving sure. sometimes because it's just you know sometimes too much trouble mm. you know ping 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 <laughs> ping the notifications and sometimes it's not for no reason. Somebody just joking, laughing. So is there like a, a, a you know, procedure or is there sort of like um, format yes, or some sort of discipline? It's heavily regulated. Okay, regulation, yeah. So, for example, to even join, it's by recommendation only. Okay. We have a handbook. You need to read the handbook and abide by its rules. Okay. It gets chatty, but typically speaking, because our topics are dropped in the evening, there Aha. is a time period for okay, that chattiness. Okay, good, good, good. And good. You, there are rules where you have to stick to the, the conversation at hand. Mm -hmm. If you veer off that too much, alarm bells kind of ring. Okay. Because 
it's so it's, it's not fair. Discipline. That's There's good. a lot That's of good. discipline That's in there. Because I've been quite disappointed in being a part of a group, and after a while, you're wondering what group is this? <laughs> <laughs> because the main the main focus, focus mm. you know, is completely. You know, yeah. and sometimes some people even want to leave, but they, they don't can't. want, they can't. They feel like they're offending, especially if maybe it's a friend who invited them. Sure. Or the, but we're, um, we're talking about all of this so everybody watching will learn. Because yes. there are so many groups out yes. there. So many groups out there, but it has to be focused. Sure. So that the people who are part of it are also learning. Learning, exactly. And that's Otherwise, been my point? primary focus about yeah. this because the last thing I want is for people to be part of something that's an irritation to yeah. them. So we have made sure that those rules are in place, that mm -hmm. they are followed, mm -hmm. and that people are, are feel like it's a happy space right. rather than a space where right. they come and right. they're frustrated. So is this, is this an open place where people can actually come and share their problems? So um, the short answer is yes, but it has to always be relevant to the topic at hand. Okay. So for example, if you have something that's off topic, you have to message um, yeah, directly, directly okay. to let, for example, okay. I, I've had a request like that come through. Right. This is something that I want dealing with, so then we'll, we'll let you know that we schedule it. Right. So at some point in the week, we will mm -hmm. address that mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. and anonymously, but you do have the opportunity yeah, to, to then learn yeah, from everybody's definitely, experiences. Definitely. That's fantastic. Yeah. So what did you do last weekend? Last weekend, we had our Atana Women's Conference. So we have the Atana Mums, but I decided or I've learned that a lot of the things we were learning were relevant to women in general. Mm. You know, whether you're a mum, whether you're expecting, we're learning so many things and all women can benefit from it. So I put on a conference, um, which was themed Woman Own Your Crown. Okay. And the idea is essentially to be able to have somewhere um, that you can have a one-stop shop where you can learn about all sorts of different things from experts. Right. You know, okay. not just not just general people because they're popular or because they're famous, but from experts. So we had a financial expert, we had a relationship expert, a psychiatrist. And where was this? This was held at the Karma Conference Center. Okay. And for a first time it was our inaugural um, conference it blew my mind. Wow. I couldn't have been wow. more delighted with wow. how it went. It was That's really fantastic. awesome. That's really, really, really good. Yeah, so what do you, what do you see for the future? In terms of... In terms of, you know, everything that you're doing, because, you know, everything is sort of linking. Yes. You know, yes. you started with the motivation, which you're still doing, which is fantastic. Yes. The Atana moms, the Atana women's now. You know, what are you seeing for the future? What are your plans? So, and what do you think about women, you know, working together, together coming together yeah, and all that? I think that's really important. Maybe starting from your last question first, mm -hmm. just using the conference as an example, mm -hmm. there is no way I could have achieved what we achieved on the 22nd without a team of women banding together right. and saying, you know, we believe in this vision and we want to see it realized. So kudos to the organizing team who helped me do this. Um, and then, you know, looking at more the general picture, where do I see everything going? I am all about people fulfilling their potential, whether you're a woman, whether you're a, a young person, whether you're a man. I want people to be fulfilled. So my contribution towards that lies in all these various things that I'm doing that allows you to access information or access a key to yourself because really it all sits within us and all I'm doing in the various things I'm, I'm offering is offering you the key to unlock the potential within Okay, yourself. now you said you're offering somebody else or that person the key to unlock, but when you were, when you were talking before, um, you said something about wanting to start something and then you put away the fear. Yes. Yes. So that's it what I'm going to... It yes. still exists. Yes. So, yeah. yes. so that's what I want us to talk about now, sure. about confidence and fear. Yeah. You know, now a lot of women sometimes will come up to you if you're on TV or if you're a an, an well-known businesswoman, entrepreneur, maybe even a politician, mm -hmm. you know, and then they'll come and say, how do you have your confidence? How can I get your confidence? <laughs> you know, as if you could say, take it and do this <laughs> and do that. You know, but what I want us to discuss is how, you know, even though you're doing all these things, you're human. Yes. And sometimes you might be afraid. Yeah. You might have that spirit of fear hovering around. What do you do when you feel that way? As you said, you're human. So regardless, no one is super 
superhuman, there's something that you're going to do, especially if it's something new, that you will probably approach with fear to start with. Mm. But I think it's about realizing the bigger picture, you mm. know? The end is always greater than the start. I like that. And you have to give yourself the chance to get to that end. We often are our own worst enemies mm. because we say, oh, we can't do it. Using the conference again as an example, when that dropped into my mind as an idea, I could have said, that's too crazy, too wild. I've not been in Ghana long enough to make something like this happen. But I think for me, there's a lot of confidence that I derive from God, without whom I don't think anything for me is possible. But then looking beyond that, it's understanding that if I'm able to take this step and not, not worry too much, before you know it, your other foot takes another step, your yes, other foot takes yes, another yes, step, yes, and yes. before you know it, you've It's done really it. interesting that you're saying that because um, a few months ago I spoke at a conference and one lady was talking about really overcoming fear yep. and confidence and all yep. that. And the, the, the answer I gave her, because truly I didn't have any tool right. to say this is the tool, yep. but and, and maybe I'm, I'm sharing my, my, my secret here now. It's not even <laughs> a secret, but maybe I'm sharing my source. Okay. You know, the people, a lot of people ask. And I think it's the same. Mm. Okay, it's me knowing that it's not my strength. Yeah. Now, if I tell myself it's not my strength and it's the strength of God, yes. who am I to sort of doubt God? So, Girl, no, no, we have to toast to we it. Have to we toast. have to toast to this. We're having hey, a hey, bit hey. of a moment Hey, here. hey, 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 hey. That is Hey, awesome. join us, join us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what it is. That really is where I sort of derive Absolutely. my confidence from. I, I just ask myself, okay, it's not me. Fine, it's not me. Who is it? It's God. Yes. I'm getting my strength from him. Yes. Who is God? Yes. Then why should I be afraid? Yes. If the owner really, of everything. But it's only if you give it all to him yes. and you trust him yes. and you have faith. I think that's the key. So that's what it that's is. That's the, the key. key trusting is really, him. Yeah, trusting and I couldn't worry. agree with you yeah. more because if he usually the ideas don't come from us. Like, mm. you know, little yeah. old me, where would I have that? power to come up with yeah, an idea yeah. so if he gives you the idea and you say okay i trust you in this experience i've had alone we literally the 99th hour seemed like everything was going to fail and the team were like belinda it's looking a little bit tricky and my confidence was beyond high wow. not because i wow. had that confidence in myself but i knew that he who has given me this idea and given me this plan is more than faithful to see it come to pass. And but I think, you know, when it, when, when, when it comes to success and all that, a lot of the time we are looking at the numbers. Yes. But if a thousand people came and, and they were not impacted. Do you understand? Yeah. If they care, a thousand people came and they were not imparted upon yeah. and impacted, yes. then it was <laughs> it a failure. Nothing. I couldn't agree yes. with you more. But if it's so, so, so sometimes it's not about the, the quantity, but it's, it's about the quality. The quality. Definitely. That's what I mean. Now, Definitely. Now, this is leading me to think about purpose. What, what, what is your definition of, you know, one's purpose? purpose? What do you think about purpose? I think if I can put it in as linear a context as I can, purpose is the idea of being able to fulfill what you were originally designed to do. Mm -hmm. If you, if someone doesn't know the purpose of something, abusing it is inevitable. Mm. And I think that even applies to us ourselves. If I don't understand what, what my purpose is here in life or what my worth is in here in life, I will accept any old thing. Yeah. And I will do any old thing mm. thinking that that's enough. Not understanding that what the purpose I've been given or the outcome of the purpose I've been given is mind blowing. Right. And I think sometimes people assume or say, but Belinda, maybe you had a really good start or, you know, whatever the assumption mm -hmm. sometimes. You grew up in the UK. You... Well, that's not true because when we came into this earth, we all came empty handed. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. one came with a waddle of cash in their hands or anything like that. A golden spoon in their no, mouth. No, we didn't. And <laughs> fair enough, you come into different families and so on mm -hmm. and so forth. But what really makes the difference is how, how you, you perceive apply, and it. how you apply yes. your time and your concepts and what you want to mm -hmm. achieve. Mm -hmm. And if you grasp that, if you're able to make that kind of paradigm shift in your, in your mind, the, the, so the would you say you found your purpose? And why do you think so? I would say that I'm definitely on course because I feel like anything that you're doing that makes you feel fulfilled, that, you know, things that you're doing. And I, I could wake up at 3 a.m. 
and I start working and then my daughter will be up later on in the day and no one's going to nap, no one's having any, but I don't feel tired because mm. I feel like, okay, I want to make an impact in these people's lives. I want people to be able to walk away feeling this, having this knowledge, having this motivation. So I've always known that whenever I'm doing things along that line, I feel really fulfilled doing it. Yeah, so whether I'm making money out of it, whether that. I'm tired or yeah. not, it doesn't apply. So I feel like you know what your purpose is when you've tapped into something that doesn't ever wear you out or wear mm, you down. Mm. <laughs> and that's why I, I, a lot of the time I, I tell people to love what you do. Yes. When you love what you do, you're not working. Yes. As in working like, you know, struggling exactly. to. It, exactly. You will spend hours on it, and 3 a.m., you know, and you won't even be looking <laughs> at the time because yes. you actually love, 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 love what you're doing. Absolutely. Now, I'd like you to speak to the ladies out there. Okay. Okay. I want somebody to, after today, watching this, say, I feel like I've been impacted. I feel like, so I don't know what you're going to say, but okay. inspire somebody out there who's probably watching, thinking, I love her hair. You know, they are focusing on the hair. <laughs> yeah. Now shock them. Okay, it's not about the hair. Let me have a but, motivational moment, yes, live please, moment. Yes, <laughs> On TV3. It's, outwards appearances mean absolutely nothing if you can't tap into what's inside of you. And for anyone listening today, I definitely want to say that there is a lot of potential inside of you. You've not even come to the realization of even a quarter of it. Don't grow weary. Don't grow tired. Every day, find a way to do something that's going to inspire and motivate and encourage not just yourself, but those around you to do more, to do better. Once you're able to tap into that you find yourself feeling more blossoming fulfilling and feeling like you're really achieving something wonderful in life i i like to think that chasing after money etc is not always everything you mm. can have all the money in the world and still be miserable and still be mm. sick and still find yourself yeah. unfulfilled but yeah. when you're able to identify what your passion is what's really on the inside and you start walk, walking and working in that lane. The so why, why do I feel beginning. like you're going to be writing a book soon? Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? High five. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Wouldn't it's been be amazing, amazing having you on, really. Thank you so much. Really. Now, one thing that I'm doing, okay, I'm really pushing women to love themselves, sure. okay? I'm promoting self-love. Yes. I keep telling people, it's so, so, so easy to say so many things you love about somebody else, especially on social media. Mm -hmm. My goodness, when is somebody's friend's birthday? <laughs> and you see you are this, and you are that. And you're, I mean, the, the whole... Accolades. And then when is their own birthday yeah. even? Like, sometimes they won't even post the picture of themselves yeah. because they feel like, you know, what is this? Mm -hmm. So I have a gift for you today, okay? Mm -hmm. It's a surprise gift, okay? That's now, this is the Renee Q Love Pillow, okay? Oh, oh, so, this is, this is for you, okay? It has a butterfly on. I love butterflies so much because I love the story of the butterfly. The ugly caterpillar didn't yes. know that it would become a graceful, elegant butterfly. So, I love, love, love I butterflies. Love now, this is for you. I want you to tell us one thing you love about yourself. And I want you to encourage women out there to love themselves. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank we you love you. So, so much. And you must love you. Okay, one thing I love about myself. I love the fact that I can keep going regardless of whatever circumstances I face. I tend to be mm. really positive, even in the midst of the storm. Uh, and I think that's a really great character to have and often it inspires and motivates others around me. So that's what I love about myself. Aww. I've fallen in love with you, actually. <laughs> I have. Thank you so much. Thank we'll be you. right back. <laughs>
Today's Woman. Join us again next week, Saturday at 11 a.m. on TV3 and on DSTV Channel 279. And many, many, many thanks to my sponsors, to the Movenpick Ambassador Hotel for the beautiful presidential suite, the one-to-one -one bar for our lovely drinks every week, to Yaz Sanitary Pad and to GTP. Thank you so much. And to the Renee Q Love Pillow. Thank you so much for pushing and for encouraging women to love themselves. You must love you. Join us again next week and have a lovely weekend. Follow me on Instagram at ReneQGH. Stay blessed.